that every night of the year, we provide 300 beds of shelter. We have an adult rehabilitation center where there's 120 beds for men who are addicted to alcohol and drugs. So when you donate a, a couch to the thrift store, 100% of that's the sale of that couch goes to supporting the rehabilitation program where men's lives are changed, families are restored. And indeed, the Salvation Army is the largest distributor of rehabilitative services in the entire world. So I'm proud to wear this uniform. We also have two towers of 319 elderly live in the William Booth and Catherine Booth Towers for an average of about, about $237 a month rent. And we take care of them with food insecurity and other needs that they have. That's an ongoing thing. We never, ever close our doors, ever. And we have a community center where about 140 at-risk youth, these are kids that we pick up from the Paramore area and surrounding areas, bring them in for a hot meal, for sports, music lessons, and life skills and character building um, skills that are given every week at the Salvation Army, just a few blocks away from here. And we have two plots of land that we're gonna build some um, high rises on that I'll tell you about that as I go through the talk. But I wanted to give you a good idea of what goes on, on in our campus every single day of the year. We have been open on that site since the 70s and those buildings are starting to crumble and fall apart because they have none of them have ever been closed. And so we have a plan that I'll talk about in just a few moments. Our budget, we raised about $12 million. When I got here, we were raising $12 million. I've been here three and a half years now. And by the way, this has turned out to be my favorite appointment in the Salvation Army. You guys have a lot to do with that. And I gotta tell you too, Mr. President, this group sounded so good today on God Bless America. I, I wanted to get my, my video out and, and tape it because you guys were just great. Y'all were great singers. I, and I apologize for sneaking in the um, Georgia fight song on you two weeks ago with the Battle of the Republic. That was patriotic. <laughs> so raise, we're now raising about $14 million a year uh, when you combine all of our facilities together. We also have a unit in Osceola County in Kissimmee. We've been in Osceola County for 42 years. That facility is exploding in growth. We provide 150 meals a day. By the way, at the Orlando campus, we give a thousand meals every day of the year. Do the math on that. Uh, that's a lot. And it comes out of a little tiny broken down kitchen with a, 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 a grease trap that's just collapsing. We have to do lots of work. So in Osceola, 100 hot meal, 150 hot meals a day, clothes closet, showers for the homeless, um, emotional, spiritual care. We have case managers that get them into jobs and get them connected with education. And with we believe in a hand up, not a hand out. And we give people a certain amount of free, we don't charge for our services, but we give a little bit of free shelter and, and basic human needs, but after a certain amount of time, if they are not willing to try to make themselves better or to get some skin in the game, we tell them you can't come back till you're ready to do something for yourself. Otherwise, we'd be a toxic charity and a flop house, and we're not going to be a party to that. I made a lot of changes for that when I came here to Orlando because with the good weather we have here, the homeless population is growing by leaps and bounds here. I will say, though, that the government, the city of Orlando and Orange County government are paying a lot of attention to homeless issues. They need to, and they're pouring money into that and they, they are paying attention. And I give them a lot of props for that because a lot of big cities just kind of push it under the rug and give a little bit of cursory help to it. So in Osceola, we also have um, uh, 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 rent and utility assistance as we do also in Orlando, but it's growing so fast that it went from a, a $250,000 budget in uh, night, uh, 2018 to today, it's almost a million dollar budget and still growing. Uh, we have an incredible county commissioner out there. Her name is Commissioner Peggy Chowdhury, who just loves the Salvation Army. It is just pouring resources into us, just pouring them in. Our philosophy, this is our mission. 
Our mission reads like this, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ through serving, suffering humanity. We love inclusively and we serve without discrimination. So our, our people say, well, I didn't know the Salvation Army was faith-based our church. Well, what part of salvation did you not get in that time? <laughs> We tell our message that that is our motivation. That's why we do what we do. But we don't we don't force it on you. And, and, and if you don't accept our message, we still feed you. We still clothe you. We still take care of your needs because we love inclusively and serve without discrimination. So how are we funded? We are funded largely by people like you, individual donations. We are moving more into foundation uh, grants, uh, government grants. Um, but basically it's our direct mail. It's what we call white mail, which is unsolicited mail. And our kettle program and other marketing, we're getting much more into uh, marketing on, on uh, social media platforms. As all of us are learning, we have to do to survive. We don't want to become the next blockbuster or Kodak of the world. So we're doing a lot. We're way understaffed. We are just like you are. We have 60 on our staff. And just like you, you all are searching because in this kind of post-pandemic world, nobody wants to work anymore or they want to work on their terms. That we're having employees saying to us, well, we're only going to work four days a week instead of five. And, and by the way, uh, case managers came to me and said, Kevin, we want to work from home. Well, how does a case manager work from home? How do you have interaction with clients? So we're having to, like you are, maneuver through this whole new normal of how do we get staff properly? So our staff is just way, way understaffed and, and, and we, we're just stretched so thin. But God's hand is working in a way that is just exciting. In this Rotary Club, we have four board members of the Salvation Army Advisor Board. Would y'all stand up so people can recognize who you are? And they work tirelessly to make the mission of the Salvation Army work. So let me talk to you about our COVID response real quickly. When COVID hit, I was in the mayor's office. It was uh, February of 2020. And we realized this was gonna become a big deal. It was kind of forming up then. and. So we had other homeless providers there, uh, services providers, and the, it was in a war room and the TV was on, the governor was talking. And then during that meeting, the governor announced the lockdown um, and, and that we're gonna uh, stay in place. And so I went to leave and Mayor Dyer said, where are you going, Captain? I said, I gotta go find a big tent. I was an event producer, I know how to get tents. He said, what do you mean? We can't socially distance in our shelters and still maintain the number of people that need to be sheltered. So we set up an 8,700 uh, square foot tent that since March of 2020, we have been serving emergency services in that tent. People sleep there, their clothes are washed, they get showers. We have emotional and spiritual care. We have case management for them. So the mayor said, how are you gonna pay for that? I said, I have no idea. And I said, I know this. I said, every time there's a hurricane in this town, our canteen, our mobile kitchen goes out and we start serving. We don't have any resources. By the end of the day, God provides resources from all over the place. So we're going to find this too. Well, guess what? Three weeks later, the mayor gave us $800,000 to fund the tent. And so that tent will be going, yes. And the tent will be up until June uh, or July of 2022. It's a, long, it's a massive operation. And so about a month later, the mayor was uh, with us in the food distribution because we distributed over and above our thousand meals a day, 1.2 million meals during the 18 months of COVID. 1.2 million meals and 82,000 beds of shelter night. And so the mayor was doing the distribution with us. And he said, you know, Captain, I learned a lot about faith from the Salvation Army. I said, yeah, God used you to make that, that blessing come true. And they are continuing to give us grants that are helping to meet the needs of the COVID response in this community. Here's what's happening. There is a new class of homelessness, a new class of people needing our services. People who never believed that they would be needed 
that there, our services would be needed by them. People who donated to us, people who were in our angel tree line, uh, donation line last year, they're now in the receiving line because uh, the eviction moratorium is over. As most of you know, landlords are charging sometimes 30 and 40% more rent because they can and people are being displaced. You have to, in order to afford to live with a family of four, in order to afford to live in Orlando, you have to have a job that pays a minimum of the $35 an hour. So that's really two and a half jobs of the normal people that we help. And, and so it is a crisis that is gonna get worse. It is growing and we are trying to gather the resources to try to respond to those because it's, it's, it's humiliating when you know most of us, or a paycheck away maybe from homelessness. We're one disaster, one tragedy away. If we have a flat tire, we go out in our house, we, we have our house in the morning, see a flat tire, we have resources. We can change it or we can call AAA, we can get it done. But the people we serve, they don't have that. And a flat tire means they don't get to work today. And that not getting to work today means they lose their jobs. So don't think that people who are homeless or people who are struggling don't think that they're lazy. Don't think they're bad people. Don't think that they're under. These, these are people who are like you and I. They just fell on some very difficult times and we need to have the compassion to be able to help them. So this new class of homelessness, we're having to figure out how to make this happen. So we are coming up with some new ways of fundraising. Okay? And I started a thing this past weekend. I'm going to show you in just a second. Um, and thank you, Mr. President, for being so tech savvy because I never could. But we started a TikTok campaign and I learned a lot. I, I don't understand the TikTok culture, but I'm trying to. So Peggy Chowdhury, the commissioner from Osceola, brought in 22 influencers. Now I call them TikTokers and I was corrected very quickly. They are called influencers or if you get enough followers, you're a creator. And these are teenage girls and, and guys and 10 year old kids. One was a seven year old kid and they're getting, uh, we, well, with all the 22 influencers we brought together, we have a total of 32 million followers. So we put them in a big 11 room house out in Kissimmee. We did a whole weekend. We took them on tours of the of campus and showed them our work and our mission. And these kids are gonna raise by December 16th, 200, thousand dollars through their TikTok influencer campaign. I had to do in four hours Friday, 38 TikTok um, videos. So I'm going to show you a couple right now. And this is, by the way, that uh, it's Athena. She is Peggy Chowdhury's daughter. Uh, so they now, I got a call from one of the um, influencers who has 12 million. Her name is Mackenzie. That's her right there, as a matter of fact. And she has, she represents an international toy company. She represents restaurants, a shoe company. So her mother called me and said, how can we help you? So they are going to send a truckload of toys for our angel tree, which we're serving 5,000 angels, uh, children this Christmas, and we're serving a thousand seniors that have been adopted. So a truckload of toys and Puma, is that the right way to say it? They are gonna donate a new pair of shoes for every single angel that we have on our list. And that came from a 17 year old TikTok influencer, Tom Wright. Dr. Wright is doing a lot to help us with YouTube. We're making a lot of YouTube videos, getting a lot of followers. So by the time this is over at our national headquarters, found out what we were doing and I didn't ask permission. I learned a long time ago, don't ask permission, ask forgiveness. And so I had to present yesterday to the national board and kind of it was, you know, being reprimanded at the same time. But I said, but we've already raised $80,000. Go ahead and beat on me a little bit more. Okay and the truckloads of toys and shoes. So now, now all 76 commands in the United States of America of the Salvation Army 
are now starting a TikTok campaign and have a TikTok platform in Orlando. Okay, go ahead. I'll do it myself. So I, I said to when they asked me to make these videos with them, and I had to figure all this out, I said, please don't make me look like an old guy trying to look hip. And the first thing she said to me was, well, Captain, first of all, don't use the word hip. <laughs> so, here's another one. Oh, here's another one. So here's the deal. This Christmas, we raise 70% of our income. We raise in November and December. On your tables, I have put these um, wristbands. I have one for Osceola and I have one for, I, I didn't give you the Osceola, I just gave you Orlando. And on these wristbands, there's a QR code. You can donate from your phone. All you have to, this is going to be on our red kettles too. All you have to do is put your phone up there. You can donate directly from your phone. And we're, so street kettles, we are going from 80 street kettles down to 23 because we can't find people to work. We can't find, we went from paying $10 an hour to $12 an hour. Nobody wants to work. And less and less people want to stand in outside of their places. It, and who carries cash anymore? So we have to find different ways to raise money. So virtual kettles, uh, again, Orlando is kind of paving the way because the Salvation Army is very archaic and very conservative when it comes to the leadership and they don't want to do anything new. That's why I'm always in trouble because I can't stay in a box. So we are looking at different ways of virtual kettles to be able to, for people to donate, you can adopt your own kettle and get your friends to join your kettles. Um, there's so many ways you can do it. This year you can adopt angels online and Walmart has, uh, you can do, adopt them online at Walmart. If you buy anything on Walmart online, you can round up and it goes to help the Salvation Army. And they have a registry for good where you can buy a gift and they'll ship it to the Salvation Army. You can adopt online, do everything online. So we're we're coming into that era where we can be a little bit more relative to the culture, but our mission has never changed. And that is to love people. And the Salvation Army mission is so close to the mission of Rotary. I'm 34 years, I've been a Rotarian, almost 35. And service above self is what we're about. I left a very lucrative career. My wife left a very lucrative career. Together, we're paid $27,000 a year combined. That is our allowance. They provide our house and cars because they can move us at any time without our uh, say-so at any place they want to move us. So we're not in it for the money. We're in it for the love of it and for the calling and the mission. When you find the sweet spot of what God created you to do, everything you do is well worth it. I also put a card on each one of your tables with that QR code. You can go to the virtual kettle and give that way. I'm going to close with a quick story because I know I'm out of time. Went to the place, the house of one of our clients a few months ago to kind of do an inspection. And she had a five-year-old girl and the mother went into the kitchen to make some tea. And the little five-year-old girl was sitting next to me on the couch and she said, Captain, would you like to see my doll collection? I said, well, how could you turn a five-year-old down about her doll collection? So she led me to her bedroom. She showed me the Barbie and Ken, the American Girl doll, the Raggedy Ann. She had all these beautiful dolls. But she said, let me show you my favorite doll. So she reaches under her bed, pulls out this tattered box, and opens it up. The most ratchet, torn up doll I've ever seen in my life. I was falling out. The hair was falling out. The arm was dangling. It was stained. And I said, with all these beautiful dolls around here, why is this your favorite doll? I learned theology that day from a five-year-old girl. She looked up, looked up at me with her big brown eyes and she said, Captain, if I didn't love this doll, who would? The brokenness that comes to our door every day, and there's a lot of them, the mental illness that comes to our door every day, the lack of hope, it comes knocking on our door every day. If we don't love them, who will? 
if the rotary doesn't step forth and do angel tree and feeding and books and all the things that we do, scholarships as Rotarians, then who else? It starts with us. It's an individual thing. It's an individual thing. And you can make the difference in the world when you give to others. That's what it's all about. God bless you. I'm proud to be a Rotarian. We are really proud that you're a member of our club. We're proud you're in this community, and God bless you. Thank you so much. If you have a, I don't know, Bill, if you want to do some questions, you want to vote. I don't know if we have maybe five minutes, ten minutes. Oh. Yeah. Questions for Ken. I'm just. Uh, Ken, great presentation. Uh, you mentioned that the uh, kettle program here this year in uh, Orlando or the county could take a hit uh, down to 29, I think you said. 23. 23 kettles. Uh, what kind of a financial hit do you estimate that to be? To, to over, the, the those, over the last five, six years, street kettles, street kettles have begun to decline. So we can't depend upon that like we used to. That used to be our mainstay, but no longer. That's why we're going into virtual kettles and you know the, the QR codes and other ways to raise money and now the TikTok campaign to, to, to cover up for that hit. But I will tell you last year, the thing was Rescue Christmas. This year it is Hope Marches On. Um, we were 32% up last year in the middle of a pandemic because people realized the need and gave more. This week, I said, I don't pretend to know the whole problem or I don't know the legalities or the solution or anything about it. But um, I saw an article this this week on the Florida Realtor site, and it said um, that Zillow offers, they sold something like 8,000 homes that they had acquired from people where, you know, you're instead of selling your home, Zillow just buys it from you, right? Well, they sold like 8,000 of them in one lump sum to this corporation and it says on there that the corporation bought them for the purpose of renting them out so it just seems like if that goes unchecked then it seems like your problem of finding affordable housing for these people is just going to get worse we and have, worse and worse we have three solutions number one peggy commissioner peggy Chow chowdhury is partnering with uh, the salvation army and the osceola county government to get funding called landlord to tenant where we're going to find landlords and we're going to say we will guarantee you we get the funds to we'll pay you up front for a whole year if you let us put the tenants in there who who are needy and we also have a fund where if at the end of that lease if they've torn up the house we will repair it for you it's a win-win situation so we're starting that pilot program it's innovative here in, in starting in Orlando and Osceola. Second thing is in Osceola and in Orange, we're gonna build two high rises that will add about total 300 units of affordable housing that is badly needed. And we're working right now with the governments to get that done. Great program, by the way. The, um, I had a couple things I wanna say. One was uh, about 10 or 15 years ago, Target stopped allowing you to go with their, their doors. So I've been in Target maybe a dozen times since and guilty every time. Do you see any change in the corporate world as far as any donations or especially in Target or are you getting kind of the same thing across the board? That was my first one. Second one is, I read the bio, what was harder, being Salvation Army or a, a, a high school band instructor? <laughs> Yeah, I taught a lot of kids over the years and loved every second of it. But I will tell you, this is the hardest job I have ever done. And I had to put on my board in my office the other day, 22 flashcards of projects that I'm working on that need my attention, need some, some attention every single day. It's the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's the most rewarding I've ever done. And the, the next question is, because we're faith-based, we're beginning to feel the crunch of that. There are corporations that don't want much to do with us because we're faith-based. But I'm gonna tell you this, I serve the creator who made money and those corporations. So if we stay true to our mission and to what we believe in, we will get what we need. The ones that don't give us, the others do. And by the way, I haven't shopped in Target since that day either. Yeah. 
Thank you. And I'm, I'm going to castigate you because you forgot something. Uh, Although we at the Salvation Army like to get large donors to come up with their money. That's wonderful. But for all of us, there's a very easy way. We still have the bed and, bed bed and, bread. Bread. Bed and bread. Something called the bed and bread. I call it the 12 by 12. If you donate $12 a month for 12 months, it's $144. If we get in volume to put up $144, that makes up a lot of difference for some of the larger donors that we're losing. If you want to learn about it, see Captain Ken, see Tom or uh, Denny or myself, I'll show you how to do that. We're going to great... we're going to push that after the first of the year, bed and bread, $12 a month for 12 months. If 12,000 people do that, that's $1.7 million. That's two Starbucks a month. We can do that. <laughs> Join me in thanking Ken. Right. We're all together. Go dogs. Go dogs. That's an old thing, isn't it?